Hi, I am live. Sorry that I was not at my normal time. I was out and about working on work projects and home projects. So anyway, uh, that's the real. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, so I am doing a live Q&A. What I will be doing during this time is I will spend the first half-ish taking questions that have been submitted ahead of time at askdanaky.com. You can go there at any time to ask a question that I answer here in the lives. Obviously, that's not real time. Um, but what I will do for the second half-ish is uh, take questions from those of you who are watching live. So if you have questions, I won't be paying attention to those. Like I, they won't actually even be coming across my feed until the second half. Um, but you can always re-ask your question or something when we get to that point where I'm taking questions from the audience. And I take as many as I can, and we usually keep these around an hour. So, uh, all right, let's uh, get going. Before I do, though, I do want a couple things I wanted to mention. If you are, um, oh, there we go. Sorry, I was clicking the wrong thing. If you need a coach, like if you're like, I need somebody to personally ask my, to personally answer my questions um, in real time as I need it. Y'all, I have coaches. I'm so proud of myself. Um, and I have told my coaches that if they would like uh, during these lives to be like, okay, y'all, just in case you, you like, don't reply necessarily to people, but they can identify themselves as a coach in the comments if you would like that. But anyway, you can go to declutteringcoaches.com. And I've got this super cool little map thing here that will help you see if there's a coach in your area who might be able to help you in person, but most of them also do online coaching. Okay. I always go and check and make sure nobody is saying that they can't hear me. Okay, good. I think you can hear me. All right, here we go. I uh, First question. Here's what I do is I read the question that was actually submitted but often what you're going to see here in pink is an abbreviated version of that. OK, just so that we can get it onto this banner right here, because I know a lot of people will say that it helps them to be able to, like, read the question again as I'm talking. Sometimes I talk a while. Right. OK. First question. I'm using your no mess method to organize my home and putting items away where I would look for them first. How do I help my family find what they are looking for without having to be asked? where is okay so i'm going to kind of come at this from two different angles maybe three maybe four who knows but the angles that i immediately think of are two <laughs> so the first angle would be um you know when you're asking the so so here here's how i say this all right because i will often be asked by people like who gets to decide where they would look for it first and i say it's the person who uses that item or the person who gets asked where that item is okay and, and the reason i bring that up is this is kind of a reality of being a mom right like i'm not sure how old your kids are um i feel like it kind of backslides a little bit in the teenage years i think i don't know um as far as you know it, it's just i'm just gonna ask mom mom where's the this where's the that okay and i know it can be maddening and so the goal here is to eliminate as much as that as much of that as you can but I don't know in my experience, um, both in working on my home and in parenting, that there's a way to never have them ask that again. Okay. But with this, it's whoever uses it or whoever is the one who's supposed to know where it is. Also, sometimes this means that if I use uh, scissors and my husband use scissor, uses scissors, and we would look for them in two different places we can have two pairs of scissors like it's you know what i mean like we want to make this functional for everybody in the house but you know my my example that i always give when i'm speaking because it's actually the example that i used to, or, or the situation in which i came up with the first decluttering question if i needed this item where would i look for it first um is fingernail clippers okay and because I found them in my kitchen and I was like, oh, you know, these aren't supposed to go here. Where should they go? And I was like, yeah, but if I take them to where they should go, according to, you know, where my grandma kept hers, we'll never find them. And that was when I decided, I made a decision. I said, I am going to ask myself, where would I look for this first? And I'm going to take it there right now. And that is how I determined the homes for that. But that was really a where do we look for this first like where would i look for this first and it was kind of a family 
thing, right? Like I knew that as a family, we looked first in that space. And so going with, you know, the where would, and, and I will often ask my family members, I'll say, hey, where would you look for this first? Um, and I get their, you know, their answer to that. And if they don't have an answer and they would have asked me anyway, then I'm like, I'm just going to, you know, but I, so it's, it's one of those things where it's kind of like, use this as a time where you are trying to embrace the realities of your family, okay, of your family and how you actually function. So either asking them or going with what you know to be true, even though maybe for you, you're completely cognizant of where they, where this item, you know, should have been. And yet the reality is your family looks for it first in this spot because either it migrates there or just for whatever reason um, that, so it's, it's embracing the reality of the whole family who lives there. So, uh, but it's also not a do this and everything is solved. Like it's a learned process over time. And part of that too is them starting to learn that things are different. Okay. Like I, I don't know the situation here, but I know for me without having had routines and um, processes, my family had learned that our normal, that the way our home functioned was this lack of routine and processes. And so for us, it took time for them to trust that, you know, that it wasn't just some illogical, strange place, you know, like, so like some of the reason why they would always ask me is because things were never logically put away. Okay. Now, when I say logically, I'm saying our family having a system, which now our system is, where would I look for this first? Okay. Um, you know, so I, I did a lot before I started doing things that way. I did a lot of the, I got organized and now I can't find anything, you know, like I put it somewhere super logical to me at the time, like really thought through, analyzed hard and blah, 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 and then never knew where it was. And so they were used to that. They were used to the fact that we were going to have to tear our house apart to find anything that wasn't just constantly, you know, used and out on the counters or whatever. And so, uh, so it was a process over time for them to start to learn to trust that things were actually going to be in the place where we look for it first. Okay. Okay. Um, next question. Okay. Sorry. Next question. Tips on how to get through a decluttering roadblock. For example, I used to be a roof used to be ruthless when decluttering, but now I'm struggling. I'm not Y'all, I'm yawning. I'm sorry. I'm not yawning at the question. I just randomly yawned. Excuse me for that. Sorry about that. Um, I used to be ruthless when decluttering, but now I'm struggling to declutter anything. Not sure if it's related to emotions, mental health, the attachment to stuff, etc. Any general tips on working through roadblocks would be appreciated. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to say is um, if you are wondering if it might have to do with mental health, then, you know, talk to a counselor about it. I, that's a very valid thing. Uh, and they, um, you know, have, have a lot of tips for that, you know, like have processes and, and we'll be able to help you maybe identify what it is that is, is causing this. But because you're asking me, I'm going to give you some practical things, um, that you can try, but just know there's a lot of value in talking to a mental health professional about this because I am not a mental health professional. Okay. But in your situation, when I, you know, kind of had some of these similar feelings, what I would, um, what I recommend is to go back to the beginning of the process. Okay. Because you said, I, I used to be ruthless when decluttering. So you, you, and I don't know if that means using my method or if that means using other methods. Okay. Uh, meaning other methods being the pull it all out of a space kind of a thing. So because I, I don't know what you're talking about, I am going to just go from like, let's say you were using my method and you were rolling along and you were doing great and you were like, oh, my house is changing. And then because of something, you haven't identified it yet, but because of some situation or mental health, um, you know, crisis or whatever, that has become difficult. And you're like, how do I get started again? Well, getting started again is like my specialty, right? Because I 
that's what I have to do again and again and again. And getting started again has been the thing that has changed my house. Okay. So what do I do in those situations where I need to get started again? And it just feels like all the, everything has fizzled. All of that energy has fizzled and that momentum has fizzled. Uh, I go back to the beginning of the process. Okay. So it is possible that maybe um, the situation was that you made progress and then it kind of went back to being, um, you know, less visible progress than what you, you know, originally achieved. And that was discouraging. I don't know. But whatever the situation is, it's it's follow the rules, guidelines, whatever you want to call them. However, it actually helps you to get things done. Uh, go back to the most visible space. And so I'm just going to start here again. Here's the thing. If you had been ruthlessly decluttering, going back to that vis most visible space, that first visible space as a place to start again, it's going to be so much easier this time. You're going to make progress so much more quickly because of the ruthlessness that you had before. Now, it's very possible that just those first three steps, which involve no emotions, no decision making, those first three steps will get this space significantly improved and back to where it was when you had ruthlessly decluttered it. Okay. So going back to those steps, going back to the visible space, going back to those first steps and saying, I am making zero commitment. The no mess decluttering process, the progress and only progress method, the five steps that I have allow you to make progress without gearing yourself up for it. Do you know what I mean? Like you can immediately make an impact on your home without, and I'm not saying you don't have to gear yourself up, but I'm just saying without a commitment, without it, it's the, the literal putting a piece of trash in a trash bag, the most obvious, nothing that you have to make a decision about is an action. And it's, and that's the best way when you are completely overwhelmed to do that, it's also the best way to just kind of get, take that first step. Okay. Cause that first step with it being trash and then go with the easy stuff, like literally just the things that, oh, it needs to be moved from here to there. It can feel very, very daunting when you're going through this to even move it from here to there. But the beauty of it is it's one item that you didn't have to think hard about at all. You barely had to think about it all and it's done and it's over. And I, okay, I made this space better. And that often will help to build that. But again, seek out mental health professional advice um, in your situation. Okay. Computer, why do you do that? All right, here we go. Um, next question. Sorry. I have a large hallway closet that I keep trying to repurpose over and over again. The person that lived here before me had to put in a or had put in a ton of shelves. So I feel like I need to use them, but no system I ever use works. It ends up being a massive catch all. Sorry, my computer's acting weird. Um, mm, let's see. Massive catch all of things. I don't know where to put. How do I decide to use it? and it not become a dumping zone of things I don't know what to do with. I'm trying to break my former way of thinking, view, viewing the entire space, closet space as a large container meant to stuff things, but I'm struggling since it's so big and can hold a huge amount of things. Okay. Um, this is a great question. I think it's one that a lot of people face, like a situation that a lot of people face in their homes. So um, here, here's what I'm going to say. You're saying you keep trying to repurpose this, uh, this closet. Okay. And it has a bunch of shelves, which feel y'all shelves. Shelves are the thing that I honestly, truly used to believe to the point where I would have argued it with you were the solution. I thought shelves were the solution. Okay. And so you not only have this amazing closet, you also have shelves, which there is very likely a time in your life where you thought if I had a closet like that, all my organizing problems would be solved. Right. And now you're living in it and you're realizing, oh, right. It, it's just not working. It's just not working. Okay. So, um, but you, you use the word, uh, repurpose 
and you use the word uh, system in the, the version that I have here, but no system I ever use works. How do I decide to use it? Okay, so I'm gonna take those words, repurpose, system, and decide, okay? And let's throw those words out and let's just say, okay, for now, I'm just gonna declutter, okay? Whether that is in the most visible spaces in your home or whether that is in this closet itself, I am going to declutter. I would recommend starting with the most visible spaces in your home and knowing that this closet, the, the thing we're gonna say it is not, is a dumping ground, right? Like I am only gonna put things in this closet that I would look for first in this closet. And I'm gonna be honest that if I wouldn't look for it, if I didn't have an answer to where would I look for it first, I'm gonna be honest that it actually shouldn't be in my house. And I'm not just going to stick it in here because I didn't know where else to put it. Right. So this is not going to be a dumping ground. We're going to take that off the table and we're just going to say, uh, as I come across things, as I'm asking myself the decluttering questions and I'm saying, where would I look for this first? The only things that go in this closet are the things I would actually answer this closet to that question. Where would I look for this first? Right. So we did. And then every time you get come to this closet and you're bringing something that you would look for first in there, and there's no space for it then because it's been a dumping ground in the past you say okay i would look for this um baseball helmet first in this closet so what am i willing to remove so that there's room for this baseball helmet okay what deserves space less than this baseball helmet ideally because you said this space is out of control okay so it needs to be decluttered ideally it's going to be trash either something that when you're looking for trash you realize wait that's sat on that shelf for 10 years and i've moved it 15 times but when i ask myself what's trash in here i realize oh that's an empty box or i mean like these are the kind of things that happen to me right so so ideally it's going to be trash or a duh donation where you're like okay this is a dumping ground there has to be a dead donation in there right like something that oh wait i don't need this it was the baseball helmet that's you know four sizes too small for the kid that i have now or whatever um all right so i do that and i one in one out for that without thinking what is my system so instead of thinking what is the system i'm going to use in here instead just declutter if you're decluttering in that space it's going to be the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look for trash. Okay. I'm going to get stuff because knowing that I don't want this space to be a dumping ground. So I only want things that I would look for first in here. So I'm going to remove trash. I'm going to take easy stuff that has a home somewhere else. I am going to, um, you know, get rid of dead donations. I'm going to ask myself the question. If I needed this item, where would I look for it first? If the answer isn't here, okay, then it shouldn't be in here. If the answer is somewhere else, okay then it goes to that space and I, you know, embrace the reality of that space when I get there. But it may be a lot of things like I would never go looking for this. Like it would never occur to me. I already had one. So I'm going to get rid of that. So it's that decluttering that space. So take out this whole idea of because because it feels like shelves are just waiting for a system, right? Take the system because what I think you're doing there is you're organizing and let's make sure we declutter first, because if you have a dumping ground, the most valuable thing you can do is declutter. Honestly, in any space, in any home, the most valuable thing you can do is declutter. But, but see what I'm saying? So going, going about it from that perspective, I uh, will help. All right. To the point, and then you embrace the reality of the container, meaning I now know that the only stuff in this space is stuff I would look for first in this space. And then I'm going to embrace the reality of the container. And I'm going to say, okay, these shelves are the size that these shelves are and i can only have what is get toable meaning accessible easily accessible in this space and so they can't be packed full right and so i need to only have what will fit in here and i can easily access it which for me in my case does not mean a bunch of bins i like to just have less stuff and each thing have its own place that I can see and access easily on the actual shelf and let the shelf itself just serve as the container, right? And so 
getting rid of a lot of stuff is just going to naturally make this space be much more like what you want it to be. All right. Laundry question. Just a little warning here. I might get sassy. I'm just telling you. Okay. And I don't mean it rude at all, but I'm just, I feel the sassiness coming on a little bit when I read this one ahead of time. Okay. Uh, laundry question. Fold the laundry straight from dryer. I have small space condo, just stacked washer dryer in the entryway closet. If I dump the dried laundry on the couch, I tend to leave them there. Yes, literally everyone does. If you dump it on, okay, this is me talking now. If you dump it on the couch, we all leave it there. This is the taking an item to a second location that is where bad things happen, which is what Oprah told us back in the 90s or the 80s or whatever. All right. Um, Folding straight from, this is back to the question, folding straight from dryer works for me only when there are a couple towels. It does not work for me if I have full load of dried clothes. Suggestions, please. My suggestion is to try it. I have never said and will never say that it's fun. I will never say and have never said that you'll like it but try it y'all. I, and I say this as someone who resisted folding straight out of the dryer forever. Okay. Now let's talk about your unique situation. You've got a stacked washer and dryer. You don't necessarily have surfaces to do this on. I get it. Okay. Um, you know, if you're like, I, at one point I had a dryer door that flipped down like this and I could use that as its own little, like, place to fold. I don't have that anymore. It fold, it comes out. So it, I don't have a little thing like that. Um, and yet whatever my situation, and I've had probably three dryers over the years, two different laundry rooms, Everything changed when I was like, when I stopped giving all of my, I had such logical reasons why it did not make sense to dry, to fold straight out of the dryer. Like I, I probably did argue it. I, but I was wrong, you know, and I'm like, so, so doing that, even if it means, so suggestions would be, um, you know, pulling out uh, all the underwear that you can see you know, pull up, okay, get all the underwear that you can see and go take that to the underwear drawer. All right, now I'm looking in here. Okay, there are um, five things that need to be hung up. Okay, I'm going to do that because that's what I can put over my arm. And then I'm going to take the things and I'm going to like hook that and I'm going to do that. You know, I mean, I will hook things on my um, doorknob. You know, like if you have a doorknob, this isn't a uh, entryway closet. Okay. So you probably have a door doorknob there. So it's like, okay, I'm going to pull something out, put it on the hanger. I'm going to do that. I'm going to pull something out, put it on the hanger, put it, do that. I'm going to pull something out, put it on the hanger, hang it there and then go take those items. But it's like doing that, that eliminates the stuff on the couch because you said, if I put it on the couch, I leave it there. That was my problem too. I could have all the best intentions in the world. I could have all these plans of when I was gonna do it and how I was gonna do it. But if I put it on the couch, I left it there. I just did. And it stayed there forever and it got super wrinkled. You know, it might mean that you say, I'm gonna try to start hanging stuff more because that's the thing I can do and hang it on this thing. You know, um, I, I did over time, you know, I would try different things like, oh, I got this cute little table that I set up on laundry day. That barely ever worked because it was just another surface for me to put things on. Like I just needed to go, you know, straight from there. Or, or, or even if, you know, you, I don't know. Cause I, sometimes I hesitate saying this because people are like, Dana said that it was okay to blah, blah, blah. I'm, I'm just talking through this. Okay. But like you take the, the folding of the things and you're pulling an item out, you're folding it and you're putting it on the couch, you're doing it, folding it. And then you go do that. I don't know, but, but try it, try different ways to make folding straight out of the dryer work for you, even though it is about the least fun thing ever. Like I can't stand it either. I don't like it. And yet 
once I saw the impact that it had, I literally could not believe it. I could not believe how much better my entire house looked on a regular basis because I was folding straight out of the dryer. And because of that, I now feel like I'm almost allergic to putting things on the recliner or the couch. Like it makes me go, no, no, no. If I do that, I would rather leave it in the dryer <laughs> than put it on the couch if I can't fold it right now, because it's just like, no bad things happen. And I know this from experience. So anyway, I'm sorry. I don't think I was sassy. Maybe I was sassy. I'm, I, I, but the problem is I get it y'all. I understand completely where you're coming from. Okay. Next question. Oh, Jennifer, you didn't put the three exclamation. I mean, not, I mean the three question marks at the beginning of the question as well. This is the whole question. This is everything. She didn't have to abbreviate it. But it also had three question marks at the beginning, which makes me want to say it like this, how to get over wanting to sell everything. OK, um, yeah, I get it. Like this was me, too. This was a big part of my um, clutter struggle was that I did used to sell everything and therefore knew uh, how much everything could get. And so I get it right. OK, how to get over wanting to sell everything is if you've never sold any of it, but you just want to, the first way to do that. Um, now, I recommend donating. I just want to be clear about that. I know there was somebody who got super worked up over the fact that I talked about selling in a couple of videos, but I'm like, you weren't listening because I'm always about donating, but I am going to come in and help you when I know, because I was there that when I wanted to sell everything and someone would say, well, you just got to donate. I was like, mm, you don't get it. And so, no, I get it. Like I totally get where you're coming from. So here is how I did it. Right. Donate the stuff that you already know you need to donate. What does that mean? Um, sometimes when we think, oh, my problem is I want to sell everything, then you don't actually get rid of anything, even though there are things that you know you don't want to sell, right? So go ahead and donate some things that you already know you're not going to sell or trash some things that you know are not worthy of selling and maybe not worthy of donating either. So do that because doing that is what changed things for me. I was like, wow, because I did know what it took to sell things. I went, oh, wow. All I did was stick that stuff in a box, drop it off somewhere. And my house looks so much better immediately. Like that changed things for me because I was like, oh, wow, when I donate, it's gone so much faster and with so much less work, which means I can then put my energy into getting rid of more stuff. And that's how I really started to build momentum. All right. But um, how do I, but what if you haven't ever sold anything? Because that's another thing that I find as well is that people are like, I want to sell everything, but then selling feels daunting selling feels overwhelming because how do you do that i hear people talk about oh i got such and such amount of money for something that i was about to throw away or whatever and i'm like i want that and so i think about all this and so i keep 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 maybe that would sell maybe that would sell surely that would sell oh grandma said that was gonna be worth money someday whatever um and so you don't know what to do with it and you're not selling okay so the, what to do in that situation is to first of all do the research go to i have a video that came out i think it was the week after christmas but i have a video about how to find out how much something is worth on ebay just to give you an idea of oh yeah that's worthless or oh okay yeah maybe worth my time anyway go watch that video but also with that um you know pick the thing that you are most confident like really truly confident is worth money and do what it takes to sell that one thing. Take away this whole like everything idea. Like I want to sell things. Yes, yes, I'm really going to do this. But there's so much. And then that stops you from doing it. So instead say, okay, this thing that I'm really confident is worth money. I'm going to do whatever it takes. I'm going to do the research. I am going to take it 
to be appraised or whatever it is that you have to do for your thing. I'm going to take the pictures and set up an account to try to sell it and blah, blah, blah. I'm going to, you know, do that, whatever it is. If you do that, one of two things is going to happen. You're going to know how to do it and it's no longer going to be this daunting thing. And you'll be like, okay, I know what to do now. So now I can actually start doing this because what you don't want to do is leave it in your house when you don't want it just because of this idea that I should probably sell that, right? Because then your house is staying out of control and it's hard for you to manage. So you're going to know what to do. But usually what happens is you realize, okay, I ended up putting X amount of hours, let's just say four hours into that, and I got $10. And some of y'all know that you're putting in nine hours of work and getting $10 or whatever, you know, but even if you, let's say I put in four hours of work, including the cleaning of it, the researching, the testing of it to make sure that it works and it's in good shape, the um, uh, photographing, the writing out a description, the uh, figuring out what to do, the uh, answering questions back and forth, the managing all this stuff, the, you know, shipping the, uh, you know, packaging, blah, 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 driving there. Let's say at the least like four hours, maybe. Okay. It took me four hours and I got 10 bucks or that's $2.50 an hour. And then you have a much more realistic idea of, oh, I don't want to work for two fifty an hour. I'd rather get this out of my house. And so that is how you get over it. Um, if you can't just take my word for it and say, donate it, you'll be so happy. Okay. But first thing to do is donate, go ahead and donate the things that you can get yourself to donate. Because if you will do that, that experience of how fast your house starts to improve by stuff leaving without any uh, work involved other than putting it in a box and getting that box out of your house, that will change how you think about all of this because you're like, wow, my house is so much better. Okay. All right. Um, I am going to take questions from y'all. I did want to uh, show you something else. Uh, for those of you, I know some of you have um, already uh, checked these out, but I do have original audio series. These are available where you would buy an audiobook or where you would check out an audiobook at your library. So most libraries as well have them. They are called Decluttering Deep Dives. It's where I basically dive into some of the hangups that people have from um, my books. Anyway, they're generally around five to seven dollars, or obviously you can you know check them out for free at your library. And uh, they, but so wherever you like to buy audiobooks, but if you buy audiobooks in a place that has credits, just know you need to go and I do not, you have to Google it, how to do it. Okay. Because you can't usually do it in the app itself, but um, don't use a whole credit for it because a credit is a lot more than these things actually cost anyway. So, and those are uh, done with my publisher professionally produced. And um, a lot of people have been getting a lot of value out of them. So I want to make sure you know about them. Okay. All right. Comments. I'm going to go to comments and I am going to, uh, yes, I'm going to answer questions from here. Yes. My lives are always available for replay or for reply. <laughs> I think you meant, um, a replay, but anyway, yes, they are. They always just live there on the thing that if you are on, um, YouTube, if you're watching on YouTube, what you're watching on Facebook, yes, it'll be there on my, you know, slab, or facebook.com slash slab comes clean. But if you're on YouTube and you go to my channel, youtube.com slash slab comes clean, uh, generally you have to like kind of look at the top or somewhere up there where it has like videos, shorts, live, that's where you want to click. And then you'll be able to see all of the past ones. Um, I don't answer this question because I am not a curly hair person. I have curly hair. What I mean by that is this is not the thing I choose to do online because it would take so much time. And there are so many people doing amazing work in this. So I will tell you that, um, and I'm going to get their names wrong, but, uh, basically I started following people on Instagram. I started following them on Instagram. They show their whole hair routine 
and they do that. So um, as far as products, I don't even remember what the names are, but basically it's like, okay, she said to get this product. I bought this product, blah, blah, blah. Um, anyway, so I know one of them is like Friz and, Fr Friz and Frills. She does a lot of tutorials. Um, Coco's Curly Hair Journal, Journey, stuff like that. So anyway, if you go and you find a couple of them and you can send me an email, my assistant has a standard email that we send out about curly hair because I, I'm just not the person to talk about that because we're here to talk about decluttering, right? Okay. Hi, Dana. My husband and I don't have many private slash personal spaces. Every time I clear a space that I have control of, he fills the space with books. I don't know what to do. Um, this is tough. Um, and you are, you are trying, uh, I, I know you want to clear the space. Um, is this a, um, are we talking about shelves that you can get rid of the entire shelving unit? Um, which I know, you know, you obviously have to navigate that within your relationship and how that would, you know, go over. Um, so I, I know, I know that I know Dawn has talked Dawn uh, of minimal mom. She's talked about like filling a space with empty, um, tubs or something like that so that other people didn't refill it. I personally didn't do anything like that because I, my goal was to go from super cluttered to empty space. Um, but you know, I think it's, it's one of those things where, um, maybe giving it purpose. And, and I know that because I, I don't know what your situation is, but I know there was a time where I was like, here's a pile. I don't want a purpose there, but it's like, can you give it some sort of an actual, you know, purpose? Like, like my bookshelf behind me, which I do not claim to be a decorator by any means. Did y'all notice my um, wig form is back? I think I took it down at some point when I was doing an interview with someone and wanted to be taken really seriously and thought I should probably take that down. Anyway, I don't know. Um, but I used to just fill up things you know, and then I had a friend kind of help me with some bookshelves. She didn't help me with this one. She's great at this kind of stuff, but the way that she like purposefully put things in a, in an area, it was very helpful. Like, so it's kind of like moving from that's where decorating can be very helpful in that area. But I also know this is a really tough thing. I get it. Okay. Do you have any advice about how to approach decluttering with a five-year-old and what to say to get them aboard? watching from Northwest England. Thank you. Do y'all need me to speak in my English, my British accent? No, no one needs that. Okay. Um, here we go. I am going to tell you to make sure that you have my five-step decluttering process, uh, because that's what you would use with your, um, with the five-year-old. Like it's, uh, amazing how, which you can get it when you go to a slopcamsclean.com slash five, sign up for my newsletter and get that printable. Um, it, it works really well with kids. Okay. And it's leading them through the process. So the, the reason I say this is, you know, you say approach decluttering. Sometimes I think, especially as moms, it, you know, we were always the parents to like, you know, kind of give our kids a heads up. Okay. This is the situation we're going into. This is kind of what you need to know to expect and stuff. And so I think sometimes um, trying to apply that to decluttering can, you know, um, not work as well sometimes when it's like, okay, we're going to declutter because, you know, we want to, um, you know, have more space to play in your room or whatever. And they're like not picturing what you're picturing and blah, blah, blah. So instead just going in and say, okay, we're going to work on your room. Let's look for trash. Let them identify the trash. It can be absolutely maddening, right? But we're going to get to every item as we work through there. But the first one would be, okay, let's, you know, here's a trash bag, recycling bin, whatever it is that you have already accessible. And, uh, you know, let's, let's throw away trash, you know, pick up any trash and let's put that there. Okay. And, and take those before and progress pictures so they can see, look, all we did was throw away trash and look at the difference here. You know, that's me swiping back and forth on my phone to show, look, it took us just a few minutes and your room already looks better. Okay. What in here is easy? What do you already know where it goes? Okay. 
and let's put those things away. All right, is there anything in here that just makes you go, duh, I don't need that. That's a duh donation, right? So you're leading them through those steps. And then as you get that stuff out, and maybe that didn't get much out because they're just convinced that everything has to stay. It's a, okay, if you needed this item, where would you look for it first? All right, okay. Oh, oh wow, that shelf is already completely full. Okay, sure. Yeah, what did, what do you what do you want to get rid of from the shelf so that we can have room for this? Okay, and that's where you apply the container concept, right? Sometimes it's a matter of saying, okay, here is, you know, if you're just going to focus on one item, like let's say um, stuffed animals, stuffies, is that what you call them? I can't remember. Anyway, uh, but as you do that, you say, okay, this is our shelf for stuffed animals put your favorite ones on there first, and then whatever uh, doesn't fit, those are the ones that we'll give to other kids. Cause we already, you know, we just put your favorites on there first and don't, don't make a big deal about how you're going to have to get rid of some, just put your favorite ones on there first and then casually mention, and you know, that'll, that's the space that we have for it. And then you just let that space be the, the hard decision maker. But so many times with so many kids, with my own kids, other people email me all the time that this happened with their kids. They were surprised at how well the container concept worked with their kids and helping them identif identify what they really loved and what they didn't love as much. Okay. Um, pots and pans plus lids, suggestions for the best way to store already downsized. Um, no, I don't have any suggestions. <laughs> I, I just try to have fewer I mean, if you watched my kitchen video, you saw eh, it's nothing. There's no amazing storage system. Um, I just have fewer things. Okay. Uh, do you suggest people declutter cupboards and drawers first? So places have homes. I do not actually. Um, I know that that's logical and there's nothing wrong with it. If that's what you want to do, I figure whatever you're decluttering and getting stuff out of your house is great. Right. But if you're going to ask my advice, my advice is to go with visible spaces first which tend to have a lot of things that you feel like don't have homes, right? Um, and as you do your visible spaces, the beauty of a visible space is that you see the progress, the people in your house see the progress that you're making and you inspire yourself to keep going. You immediately feel like you have more space in your home, your home feels more functional, you like it better. So that there is so much power in that visible progress that I want everybody to have that. Like that was transformational for me. It's been transformational for so many people. It's just to experience that visible progress. Um, but as you do that, as the answer to where would I look for this item first is a cupboard or a drawer, you take it there right now you don't say, oh, well, I'm going to, so here's what I used to do. I used to be like, oh, well, I'm going to have to declutter those spaces eventually anyway. So, you know, those spaces need to be decluttered. I'm just going to set this aside until I do that in the future. I don't do that. Okay. Instead, where would I look for this first? The answer is that drawer. I'm going to take it to that drawer and I'm going to force myself to face the reality of that drawer, not getting sidetracked and decluttering that drawer, but just saying, okay, if I would look for this first in that drawer, if these spaces were clear in the way that I'm trying to get them to be, then it has to have room to go in that drawer. So what can I remove from this drawer that's ideally trash or a dead donation because my trash bag and my donatable donate box are back at the space that I was originally decluttering. What here can I get rid of in order to make the space for this. So I'm not going to make this space any worse. Okay. But my house is going to be better because something has a definite home and it's in that home. Okay. So I'm going to remove something to create the space for that. And then, then I use that momentum that I'm gaining from the visible progress. And then I get to there, but, but I'm giving things real actual homes in those cupboards and drawers. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, did I see your previous comments? Probably not. Um, but you can ask it again. It's 617 in New Zealand and it is Wednesday the 12th. I love it. I um, love New Zealand. I've been there. It's shockingly gorgeous, right? Um, let's see. Sometimes I don't know who you are um, responding to. Okay. Oh, here we go. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> 
do I use a vertical file holder for your paper system? I use the, it's still, um, it's in the video where I sell paper clutter and uh, it's a, <coughs> excuse me. It's on the wall. It's a hanging system on the wall. It's got three wire, like black wire mesh kind of, uh, you know, things that come out from the wall about this. It's in my house, not here. So I'm in my office. Um, and within those, I have one file folder in each. I don't, you know, do any kind of extra uh, sorting within those. So it's the action, like do it now file or, you know, have to do something with this, the wait and see and the one for this year, 2023. So, um, but yeah, I, the reason I have the blue thing in there is it just looks a little bit prettier. It's in a space where people don't really see it that much anyway, but just made me feel better to make it look a tiny bit prettier. Okay. Thank you for watching. Okay. Um, okay. Looking for new comments. If you've asked questions, go ahead and ask them again. What, when you've decluttered visible space, Dana, what do you take next and what order? I don't know what that means. Can you ask it again? Um, although not that I can necessarily see that when you've decluttered a visible space, uh, what do you take next and what order? Okay. So, um, go to the, okay, here, I'll just answer it how I think you mean. Uh, so declutter a visible space. I mean your front door or your whatever door people, what do you take on next? Okay. So there's two different ways to do this. Um, you can declutter in your, you know, entryway and then like maybe your living area or your dining room or whatever's just off of kitchen, whatever's just off of that space. Um, like the next thing people would see if they actually came into your house. Uh, you can declutter just what's visible in that room and then move to the next room and do just what's visible in that room already and not deal with cupboards and drawers, or you could do what's visible in that room and you can then go into the cupboards and drawers in that most visible space. Okay. Um, but yeah, like it, it can, so, so here's how it works. Declutter your entryway or wherever people see when they open, when you, you know, they're at your door. Declutter that, then move to the next visible space. Okay. But when you move to that next visible space, let's say it's um, three days later because you've been walking by that entryway going, oh, it looks so good. Oh my goodness, that looks good. And so you're inspired. Like, I'm going to do some more decluttering. You're Goal for that day is to get to that second most visible space. But before you do that, go back to that entryway and do it again. Because you're going to have things that have just kind of randomly ended up there over the last couple of days. It's where it can feel like, oh, I don't want to do that again. It took me four hours. This time it's going to take like three minutes, right? Because it's just dealing with a few things that are now just like randomly there and dropped and easy stuff, whatever deal with those things and then move to the next visible space. And then you're going to be inspired to keep decluttering because you're seeing the progress. Go back to the very first one, take three minutes there, go back to the next one, take five minutes there and then move to the next one. That's how you gain momentum. That a big frustration for people like me is I work in this space and then I work in this space and I turn around and that space is back to being a disaster, right? And it feels like, what is the point of any of this? And that's how you avoid that. That's how you really build that momentum and then just keep going so that because going back to the, the space that you've already decluttered is such a short, tiny bit of time, but you don't believe that until you actually go do it. But as you do that and you really build and you get to those, that's how you eventually get to the rest of your, your house. Okay. When do you take things out in order to put your favorites first? So the only time I would do that, the only time I'm going to do that is when I have like, okay, this is my space 
that uh, this is a great question. So I think you're asking about the container concept and I'm always like, put your favorite things in first and then whatever doesn't fit, doesn't fit. Okay. Like whatever doesn't fit has to go. But what do you do when there's already all this stuff in this space and you're like, this is the space I got to get rid, get rid of your least favorites. Okay. Until the only things left are the things that fit get to obli and usably. Okay. So it's kind of that pull out your least favorites until then. But remember, that the first step, the first part of that fifth step, the, you know, make it fit step, the embrace the container concept step is consolidate. So if you're just looking at it and going, I don't know what my least, go ahead and consolidate within the space without pulling everything out. Say, okay, I'm going to put, let's say I'm looking at my sock drawer. I'm going to put my, um, you know, longer socks that I wear with like hiking boots or boots or whatever. I'm going to kind of move them over. without pulling things out. I'm going to put them together. Sometimes just doing that makes you realize I have 16 pairs of socks for hiking boots. And I have been on one three day hiking trip in the last four years or whatever. And you're like, okay, I don't need 16 pairs of that, whatever. And it just will help naturally make a lot of those things uh, donations. But yeah, as far as what your question is, you pull out your least favorite until it fits. Um, I love this. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I'm doing take your house back and I'm stuck on my craft supplies. I have too much, but none is trash. How can I move forward? Okay. So it becomes an issue of the container concept. All right. So it becomes an issue of where would I look for this first? Is there space in that? You know, like, let's say, where would I look first for my, uh, paints? I would look first for them in this thing, but that thing is full. Okay. Well then what paint do I like less than this one? to pull out in order to create the space for this and giving things actual homes. After you have done that, if it is still just too much and it's like a feeling that it's consistently getting out of control, then that's clutter threshold issue, right? And you need to say, I am going to accept myself for who I am, that I can't handle this much stuff. So I just need to have less. So take my least favorites and get rid of those until I get it down to a point that I can easily handle. I'm overwhelmed with physical photos and photo albums, feel paralyzed to throw any away. And the pics do remind me of past, past events and special moments I'd forgotten. Advice on decluttering them. Yeah, I mean, it's the same, it's the same process. It's just hard. I mean, I'm not gonna say it's not hard, um, but it's the same process. So give yourself the beauty of that first step, the trash step where you're like, there's no, my husband has said the words, I didn't know you throw away pictures. <laughs> Um, even pictures of someone's foot from 1982, back when we couldn't know what we had just taken a picture of. Right. So, um, and then there were like triples of that picture of someone's foot, but the beauty of that first step being trash, the easiest of the easiest stuff, like zero emotions, zero decisions is that it's no commitment. Okay. So going through and saying, I probably love all of these. I'm not going to make any hard decisions today, but I am going to look through and just see if there's any trash, just see if there are doubles and triples, just see if there are actually, there are four pictures here and they're all basically the exact same thing, but this is the best one. Oh, okay. You know I mean? Like, so only if it's obvious, but just doing that. And then your brain starts to adjust to what you have and then follow the same process until you have gotten rid of all the stuff, except the ones that really do have value and that you really, you know, do enjoy. Okay. You've gotten rid of all the duplicates and all the bad ones and all that kind of stuff. And now you're really down to it. And then you say, okay, this is the space that I have to devote to pictures that does not take up space that we need to actually live our everyday life. This space right here, I'm going to, you know, this, this cabinet that is going to be for pictures, it can hold a container that's this big. Okay. I'm going to put my favorite ones in the container first, and then I'm going to let that be a decision. And just it, it, I, I can't, I want you to understand that when you put things in a container, and I say, let the container be the bad guy. Let the container be the limit. Let the container be the one that says that's enough. You can't keep any more. It's so rarely when you're thinking that way, as you're putting things in the container, it so rarely becomes an issue 
of the container being full and then you're having to make our agonizing decisions. Yes, that is the way that 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 it plays out. But in reality, it's so much easier than that, because just knowing there's going to be a limit is the thing that makes those four pictures that are exactly the same, except for this one has great lighting and the others are all eh. knowing that there's a limit means that even when the it's the first things that I'm putting in this thing, I'm like, oh, there's a limit. So I'm going to keep this best one and put it in there. The others can go. Do you see what I'm saying? Like it, there's just something about it that is so incredibly freeing in this whole process. Uh, oh, I love this story. Change our lives. Got all you changed your life, just to be clear. Uh, got all the children's toys, filled the room to the ceiling. They said keep everything, gave the three boys a box container each, and they each filled them. And they told me to get rid of everything else. And we did. That is amazing. That's amazing. Uh, what if I have no homes for most things? I struggle with where would I look for this as usually the answer is tornado around the whole house digging. That is not, okay, you are asking where would I look for this? And I get it. Like you picture yourself digging around the whole house tornado. That, that was me too. Like, so I totally understand what you're saying here. Make sure you're asking where would I look for this first? Assuming that I'm going to spend the day digging the whole house tornado digging. Okay. I assume that's how it's going to go, but where is the first place in the course of that time that I assume I'm going to be digging things, you know, digging through the whole house. Where's the first place where I would look. That's where it goes. Okay. Um, let's see. Looking at this. Okay. Looking for question marks, but I keep saying ones I've already answered. Here we go. Okay. I have beautiful kimonos, etc., from amazing host families from our travels. Donating them feels horrible, but I don't really wish to display these items on my walls. Any suggestions? Okay. Um, all of that is beautiful. Like, just I think sometimes. People think that if I donate something, it's because I don't appreciate it. I don't see the value. I don't have any feelings or emotions, you know, I'm like, and it's like, it makes you feel like, but wait, I do love this stuff. I do remember all these wonderful things. Um, it comes down to all the same process. So it's like, if I needed this, where would I look for it first? I wouldn't go looking for this item. So it's not that I don't think it's wonderful. It's not that I don't have great memories. It's not that I don't value the person who gave me this item. It's that I would never go looking for it. Or it's that even though I would look for it in my closet, if I did need it, the reality is I don't have a big closet. And I don't have the space for this. Okay. And so it's not that I don't think it's wonderful. It is that the life I'm living now. Okay. The, the, you know, whatever it is that your situation is, you know, our reality is that I just don't have room for it, you know? And, and so I'm going to let it go and I'm going to donate it. And, you know, somebody somewhere who needs this item or who, has their own memories attached to something and, and then they didn't actually get this, whatever, they're going to find it and they're going to appreciate it. It's going to, it, your stuff has so much more possibility of going to someone who's going to value it if you donate it. Um, but, uh, but just remembering that it is not, that that's the beauty of the container concept. I can feel all the feelings and I could acknowledge them and I can honor them but there's, I get to blame the container, right? Because it's really not an issue of emotions. It's an issue of space. So, uh, okay, let's see.
<laughs> Your son is amazed that a lady in America is giving us this advice. Yes. He's five, right? Is he the one that's five? I love it. Um, I feel overwhelmed. Should I work in one area at a time or a little bit in each area? I would do the visibility rule because ultimately that's the thing that helped me work in one area at a time, right? Like I, um, I get what you're saying. I used to feel like I would do a little here, do a little there, do a little here, do a little there. And my house never felt like it was, you know, getting any better, but the visibility rule is what helped me go. That's I really worked hard in this visible space and went all the way through the decluttering process in this space. And as I did that, it was like, oh, that space is full on decluttered, which makes it so much more functional, which makes it so much more maintainable. And then I moved on to the next thing. And then it, with going back and, you know, redoing whatever I needed to redo in that first space first, that takes like three minutes. Talked about that a few minutes ago, if you're just now joining us, but um, that visibility rule is the thing that builds the momentum. Okay. And, and breaks through that feeling of being overwhelmed. Okay. All right. This is nice. Yeah. I had the same thing. I took pictures of me in the kimono. So I'd have the memory of them. That could be like a super fun honoring, you know, thing that you do before that. Um, let's see. Y'all are just teaching each other and I love it. This makes me so happy. Are we live now? thought I was catching the replay, but YouTube says you are live now. Either way, glad to see you. Thank you. Yes, you are live. I mean, you're live, Trish, you are watching live. I just don't want, I always feel so bad when people are like, I'm so excited. I found it. I found, I'm catching you live. And I'm like, well, that was six weeks ago or whatever. <laughs> but yes, Trish, you are watching live. Oh, that's right. I didn't start on the hour. Cause I'm like, man, I've been going forever and I still have 20 minutes. I'm like, oh no, I started like it. 40, didn't I? Yeah. Okay. Then I have been going an hour. All right. My time passage awareness disorder. Whew. Okay. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to take one more question. Here we go. I've been consistently decluttering for over a year now, but I have a long ways to go. My patient has been sees the progress. Oh, you're, <laughs> I think, did you voice to text this? My patient husband or my phone will change any word into something that doesn't make sense. My patient husband has see, sees the progress, but I feel like it's not fast enough for him. Any tips? Um, I mean, you said he's a patient husband, but you feel like it's not fast enough for him. I, I mean, that sounds like maybe you're putting that on yourself. So just keep going and knowing that final decision by final decision is the way you make real, true progress. And the longer you go, the easier it's going to get. And, and you'll get there. You'll get there to the point where your house is, um, your house is manageable for you. Okay. All right. I have to stop now. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, an hour. It says up here on my screen that you've been going an hour and three minutes. Oh, y'all goodness gracious. Okay. Uh, this has been fun. Don't forget if you would like to ask questions for future lives, lives, you can go to askdanakaywhite.com. All right. I will talk to you later. Bye.